friends welcome to the third class on gps serving today's class i will discuss on gps signal gps signal i will discuss under three heads carrier waves gps pseudo random noise code and navigational data now users we do receive gps signal from gps satellite vehicles and then these gps signals are we process to extract the information of our requirement these gps signals are actually some modulated carrier waves and it contains different types of carrier waves different types of codes as well as different types of navigational data and as a user what we do we do try to extract the information or data which we want to extract or we want to derive so we need to know thoroughly the contents of any gps signal so there lies the need of this class that we need to know as well as understand the contents of a gps signal now gps signal is the modulated carrier wave consisting of carrier wave which is sinusoidal in nature then it contains binary type of pseudo random code and also binary type of nerve data so sinusoidal carrier waves binary pseudo random noise code and binary navigational data now what it is done first this prn code and data gets added through modulo addition and then these two get modulated to carrier wave as a result we get the modulated gps signal now the carrier waves are used for or helps in transmitting the gps signal from satellites to the receiver without getting it lost in the atmosphere the primary function of prn code is to provide the identification of the signal that means from which satellite it is coming and then data is the primary object or primary information which users will make use to derive many important information for which this signal we are receiving now there are different types of carrier waves that is available in a gps signal this from beginning gps satellites are transmitting the l1 and l2 carrier waves and later this l2 is also associated with one more civil signal that is called l2c signal that is in quadrature phase and that is in phase and now it is the signal l5 is also available from latest gps satellite so in short if we see 
to the defined signals we can see we will see that L2 sorry L1 C A L2 C and L5 these are the three civil signals available for users to use. Now, let us discuss on these carrier civil waves. First, it is L1. Now, L1 signal is having the frequency of 1575.42 megahertz. This signal contains two types of codes. In phase, it is the P code or for civilian, it is the PY code and in quadrature phase, it is the CA code. And the L1 with CA code is having more power than the L1 with P or PY code. So, this civilian signal is more powerful. Next, it is the L2 signal. L2 signal is having the frequency of 1227.60 megahertz. However, the content of L2 signal will depend upon the satellite from which the signal is coming. Now, in phase the L2 signal may contain PY signal with NAP data, P or PY signal with or without NAP data and C A signal with NAP data. So, we can say L2 plus P or P y, P again it may be P with or, or P plus NAP, P y or P y plus NAP or C A plus NAP. So, which of this combination 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which one will be available in a particular signal? It will depend upon from which satellite this signal is coming. Now, in quadrature phase, it may be there may be three combinations. <clears throat> like L2 with plus it may be CA plus NAP data or CM plus NAP data or CL. So, out of these three only one type will be available. Now, this part of the L2 signal is also known as L2C signal which is called second civilian signal, second civilian signal. Now, this L2C signal is more powerful than the L1C signal. So, L2C signal is can be L2C signal can be or will be more available more under tree. However, L2C signal provides position having 65 percent more uncertainty, more uncertainty 
then what the L1 CA signal will provide. So, if we want to walk under tree or little shade of tree, then we will go for L2C signal, but if we want to have our position more accurately, then we will go for L1CA signal. Of course, if we have the capability to capture both of them, then that will be still better because that will not only L2C plus L1CA, both will provide us the measurement for ionospheric error, which is the worst type of error that is available in GPS signal. And once we can measure the ionospheric error, we will be remove it from our measurement. So, that is the advantage of having two civil signals. <coughs> then our L5 signal which is having the frequency of the order of 1176.45 megahertz. Again the contents of L5 signal will depend upon the satellite from which we will get this signal. Now again in L5 also in phase the L5 signal will be associated with the I5 code and data. And in quadrature phase, the L5 signal will be associated with the Q5 code only. So, it will not be having any data. However, L5 signal is more powerful than L1CA signal as well as also L2C signal. <coughs> not only that, L5 signal also having uh, capability of wider bandwidth or longer spreading cords. So, L5 signal is the most advanced and developed signal. So, L5 signal along with L1 CA signal and L2 C signal these three signal together provides a very robust signals for civilian use. Now, we can see there are three civil signals L5, L1, CA and L2C and all these three signal has its own advantage and domain of application. Like L1 signal which is having the maximum L1 CA. This is the signal which is having the maximum frequency. So, this is having the least ionospheric error. So, it will provides us very good position. Then L2C signal is having the best cross correlation performance and L5 signal is most powerful and its frequency works in the range of ARNS which stands for Aeronautical Radio Navigation Service band. That means this L5 signal is most useful for aero navigation. It provides a uh, very, uh, it is also powerful. So, aero navigation becomes easy with L5 signal. So, with this, 
we can now look into the part of navigational code P R N pseudorand num noise code or ranging code it has different name the most important function of P R N code is it provides identification to the signal but another more important not less than identification is that PRN code provides the basic framework to acquire the signal by user. So, acquisition of GPS signal is possible because of the nature of PRN code. Further, PRN code is also it is acquisition of GPS signal by user number 3 PRN code provides the time measurement. So, these are the 3 important work that the pseudorandom noise code provides to user. <coughs> In GPS signal there are 6 types of PRN codes that are available which are the most important initially it has been the P code or precise code which is fundamentally has been developed for the military purpose, but later it is being opened for civilian, but it has been encrypted with another code which is W code, so which is a 20 bits per second code and with this a deformed PY code is made available for the civilian use. Then it is the course acquisition code, CA code, course acquisition code, then for the civilian code it is the C M civil moderate code, then your C L civil long code, then five I five code for the L five signal, and then Q five. So there are six types of codes that is available for civilians to use. Of course, P code is not for civilian use, it is the PY code which is useful or which is which civilian can get access to. <coughs> CA code, CM code, CL code, I5 code and Q5 code. Now, let me start with the P code or precision code. The P code or precision code actually it is developed for the military use, but for civilians it is the PY code. As I told you PY code is nothing but a P code encrypted with another code called W code and this P code is having the chipping rate. 10.23 megahertz, whereas the W code is having 20 bits per second. So, uh, <coughs> these two will give you the PY code, and this PY code is having the chip rate what is available for P code, that is, what is the chipping rate of PY code and having your chip length 29.3 meter that means with P code only theoretically we can arrive at an accuracy of 29.3 meter. However, at present we have many in improved algorithm. So, we can achieve much more better 
accuracy than this. Now, these P codes are having period of 7 days. That means, the same code repeats after 7 days and these 7 days the first day, the 0 day starts, 0 day starts at 0 hour between Saturday and Sunday, Saturday and Sunday. So, 0 hour and generally we go, we tell it like 12 hour at night, which is the 0 hour, 0 hour from Saturday to Sunday. That means, some 0 hour of Sunday is the time when the P code starts and the code continues and again it restarts in the next 0 hour of Sunday. So, it is called 7 day and each code that means from particular satellite particular 7 days code they use. So, that 7 days code identify also identifies the satellite vehicle. Satellite vehicle is also identified by the weak number of the P code which has been assigned to that particular satellites. Next it is the CA code, CA code means course acquisition code. Actually, this is the most important code because the acquisition of GPS signal starts with this code and this provides the identification of the signal. It also provides the measurement of time first and it helps in acquiring the signal. Now, the chip length is uh, chip frequency ch uh, chipping rate is 1.023 megahertz that means one tenth of what P code is and its chip length is 293 meter. So, this is the accuracy raw accuracy that we can achieve using the CA code. And each satellite uh, have in individual CA code or particular CA code which provides the identification of this code. And another thing the period of this code is 1 millisecond that means at 10 to the power minus 3 second interval this code repeats. Next civil code as I told you civil codes are available with the L2CC signal which is the L2C, L2 signal in quadrature phase. <coughs> now, this civil signal that means in the in phase it is the That means, with the L 2 C signal will be in the quadrature phase of the L 2 signal and this will be having the that uh, C M civil moderate and C L code civil long. It is having 10,230 chips and the civil long having 7,67,250 chips. So, it is of moderate length <coughs> and having uh, the accuracy same as what P code provides. So, CM code is equivalent to PA code of military signal. And CM code is also provided with the navigational data, but our CL code does not have any navigational data. 
Next, it is the I5 or Q5 codes. These two codes are available with the L5 signal. As I have told you, the I5 codes are available in phase with the L5 signal, whereas Q5 code is available in the quadrature phase. And also I5 signal is associated with the data, NAV data, but there is no data available with the Q5 code. Now the I5 and Q5 code is having chip rate 10.23 megahertz. So as it is a P code and <coughs> its PRN code sequence is 10.23 Z. Now one thing which is unique to these I5 and Q5 code is that they are associated with a PRN code known as Newman Huffman code which is having the chipping rate 1 kilohertz and it is a 10 bit for I5 and 20 bit or for Q5. Now this Newman Hoffman code is added to I5 and Q5 for better separation, bit synchronization and per there are three functions that this does. One is that it provides better separation. It provides better synchronization. And most importantly, most importantly, this Newman Hoffman's goats obstruct the GPS signals to get interfered with other narrowband signals. This is the most important thing. So, I5, L5 signal is considered to be very powerful and very useful for the civilian use. So, with this I want to talk next on navigational data. Actually, navigational data is the most important information. Navigation data. This is the most important part for user. Because user look for navigational data. Now, before I go, what is its content? Let me first see that how many actually navigational data that is available from in defined parts of the GPS signals are not same. For L1 and L2 signals, this navigational data is of variety known as LNAP. That means legacy navigational data. Whereas, the navigational data that is available with the civil signal L2C, it is the CNAP. So, it is called civil navigational data. Now, in case of I5, because Q5 do not have any data, navigational data, I5, it is also civil navigational data 
but of different variety. So, so modified civil navigation data. Now, what is the significance of this? The significance of this information is that while we will process the GPS data, we cannot, we should not you make use of all these signal together. Only we will be able to process the signals which having the identical type of navigation data. This is the most important part. Now, what is the use of navigation data? Now, the navigation data actually the navigation data contains a plethora of information about the satellites, its orbits, about satellite, about orbits, about the atmosphere through which it is coming and many other. So, now the information about the orbits will provide the position of the satellites at the particular time of transmission of the signal Now, satellite information provides you the health of the satellites and the subsequently the quality of the data that has been received by the user and this atmospheric information and many other informations which will also provides us about information about the quality of data and other and other information. So, and to summarize we can say like that actually as a user we are in need to have the navigational data from the satellites. In order to get the navigational data, the identification of the data from which the data is coming from particular satellites, PRN codes are used and to these two data is having very low energy because these two are in binary format and so if we to if we have to get the data from satellites to receiver through such a huge distance of about 20,000 kilometer we need to provide enough energy to this part of the information which is being done by making use of carrier waves. So, these three makes are the GPS signals which has been discussed in this class and in the next class we will be discussing on GPS receiver. Thank you.